I was in the same Sunday school class as John Lennon when I was five or six years old. And uh, I went to the same secondary school as him, Quarry Bank. And um, when I was 14, John started his uh, school skiffle group. And I bought a banjo the day before, went into school and said, I bought a banjo. Somebody said, do you want to be in a skiffle group? They knew I couldn't play it, but it didn't really matter anyway. So uh, that's how I became a member of John Lennon's original Quarrymen in 1956. And uh, sometime in July 57, they were becoming a rock and roll band. And uh, I hated rock and roll. I've revised my opinion since then, but at the time I thought it was exploitational, a terrible racket and a big rip-off trying to separate kids from their cash. And uh, I became a, um, a purist folky eventually. But uh, then in the end of 57, well, you can't be a banjo playing a rock and roll band. The washboard player left about the same time. Some guy called Paul, Paul Mac, Mac Tavish or something replaced me. I don't know what ever happened to him, but there you go. Well, Donegan played a banjo and a guitar, right? Um, I subsequently discovered in conversation with him that he actually played guitar chords on the banjo. Um, so as our hero Lonnie was playing banjo or guitar, my, uh, my uncle used to play fiddle and saw in a dance band in North Wales. And when he heard I was trying to find a, an instrument, because they, you know, they, were, they weren't easy to come by, you know, uh, he said, oh, his brother-in-law, who'd been a guitarist stroke banjo player in this band, dance band, was selling both. Was I interested? So by the time we got over to North Wales, the guitar had already gone. Now, if he hadn't sold the guitar, I don't suppose Paul McCartney would have had a look in, would he? So that's why I ended up on the banjo. But I'm, I've been playing the guitar ever since I left the quarryman. I think the rock and rollers have, have intentionally or unintentionally tried to write skiffle out of the music history as being as being something beneath them, you know? Um, I, and even the guys in the quarrymen, the drummer, they said, oh, well, you know, skiffle, skiffle only lasted about six months. I said, Colin, when was the first rock and roll night at the Cavern in Liverpool? When was it? May 1960, right? May 1960. And we started sometime in 56. Rock Island Line actually came out on an LP in 1954, and it hit the top January 56, and I've got a ticket for the Liverpool Empire, uh, Chris Barber and his band, and I was there 1st of January 1956, so it lasted more than six months. Well, Rock Island Line was the record which set not just me, but just about everybody playing instruments, and um, when Lennon was um, he's either short of money or, you know, moving away from Skiffle, I bought his copy of Rock Island Line for two and sixpence. And uh, I've got Lonnie to sign it, I've got Beryl Bryden to sign it, and uh, a few years ago Chris was playing at the Beck Theatre in Hayes, near where I live, and I have a, on our website we have a picture of Chris Barber signing my copy of Rock Island Line. So, there you go.